Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. There's some additional information that has come to light from the developer of the game, Ghoulboy, the developer I added to the Dirty Devs list some short time ago. There are also a fair number of people that didn't catch some bits of information in the last video, so in addition to said new information, I would like to take a moment to lay out for everyone again the issues with the key bands, so those that didn't catch it in the first video, and I will take full responsibility for that information not coming across in a more plain and direct fashion. Links to anything still live, as I stated in the previous video, much of it was deleted by the developer, will be in the description down below. Also, this will not be a facts first and then opinion later video. I will present the facts with a brief editorialization to make sure everything is placed into its proper frame of context, and then I will state my opinion at the end. The reason for this is because I apparently didn't lay things out plainly enough in the previous video, and there were a lot of people that didn't catch on to some of the information therein. So, to recap, we have thousands of Steam users that bought the game Ghoulboy through various third-party Steam game bundle sites that had their games unexpectedly removed from their accounts by the developer. This was due to the developer banning all Steam keys generated for the third-party sites, which the developer initially claimed was because one of the key seller sites, Otaku Bundle, had not paid the developer for the thousand keys he stated they had sold. The most likely reason why Otaku Bundle did not pay the developer, as it turns out, and this is probably why they never responded to me, was because Otaku Bundle has gone through liquidation. This information came to me from Melo Online, a game journalist and friend that as of January 10th, Otaku Bundle has been, or at least has started, the process of liquidation, meaning they're going out of business and have been radio silent since before that time. Amelo Online also commented that there have been other indie developers that have cited a lack of communication from Otaku Bundle since that date. And if this was a simple matter of a developer entering an agreement with one key seller site and just banning keys to that bundle site because of lack of payment, then this would have been a very different conversation. However, Otaku Bundle was the only bundle site that had not paid the developer, and due to the developer's revocation of those keys, it wasn't only the customers of Otaku Bundle affected. Now, in my previous video, I pointed out that the Steam user Dr. Shadows had aggregated all of the different bundle sites that were being affected by this action, of which there were a total of four, with one of those being unconfirmed at that time. There was GoGo -Go Bundle number 56, Otaku Bundle number 20, the Hidden Gems Bundle 7 from Fanatical, and the Friday special number 60 bundle from Indie Gala. So if you had purchased those bundles from GoGo -Go Bundle or from Fanatical's Hidden Gem 7, then you also would have found your game removed from your library as well, even though those two bundle sites had done absolutely nothing wrong. They entered into the agreement, they paid the developer based on the sales, gamers got their games, everyone should have been happy. Also, it has since been reported to me that somehow in this massive sweep that those that bought the game from Indie Gala were unaffected by all of this. So while many have stated, and I wouldn't disagree if this were actually the case, that the developer had every right to ban the keys sold to the site that didn't pay him, he most certainly did not have the right to ban the keys of the other Steam game bundle sites that had entered into their agreements with him in good faith. The developer later attempted to brush off the controversy brewing in the discussion threads of his channel as not a big deal, stating that he thought that everyone had already played and finished the game because the keys were given out a long time ago. And then the developer promptly set out attempting to remove any visible criticism of his actions by deleting all of the discussion threads calling him out for what he had done. At the same time, the developer also had raised the prices of the game twice without notice, the second of which was a mere 24 hours before this key banning happened. Now, to his credit, the developer has attempted to get people their games back, but is doing so one at a time via email and has since been unable to send out more keys due to his inability to generate more, as key generation must be approved by Valve, and if there is suspicious activity, Valve can and has in the past blocked the generation of additional keys for the use of third-party distribution, and that would appear to be the case here. I have reached out to Valve for comment, but as that sort of thing is an internal review matter, Valve has in the past been reluctant to say anything on the record when it comes to internal matters. It would also seem that the developer has decided to put his foot into his own mouth on this as well. Thanks to Sanji Homura for pointing this out, as I'd almost missed it while I was skimming discussion threads, it would seem that the developer did not ban these keys due to a lack of payment from Otaku Bundle as he had previously stated, and the story is now changed. Now the developer is stating that he 
had given keys to GoGo Bundle, and that bundle site did not send him back the unused 8,000 keys that was sent to that key seller. He then stated that if GoGo Bundle had sold those 8,000 keys that he had provided to them, his console sales on the Nintendo Switch, the PS4, and the PS Vita might be affected, and that he wanted to block that from happening. So to sum up, originally the developer claimed that Otaku Bundle had not paid him for the 1,000 keys they'd sold on their site, which I believe is highly likely as that site is essentially more abundant at this point. So the developer banned all keys for the three bundle sites that have been confirmed, Otaku Bundle, GoGo Bundle, and Fanatical. The developer now claims that the unsold 8,000 keys for GoGo Bundle would have harmed his sales on console, so he revoked the keys for that site in order to prevent that from happening. And in the process, he did the exact same thing for the site Fanatical as well. And for all three of these bundle sites, he didn't merely revoke unused keys, he revoked all of them, even the ones from the sites that kept their end of the bargain. Now, my take on all of this is very simple. I dislike being lied to in an extreme degree, but as it turns out, the developer did lie to me about the reasons behind the key revocations. Whether a lie being told directly or a lie of omission, as was the case here, a lie is still a lie. The developer lied about his reasoning to me initially. Now, as it turns out, thousands of gamers have had their games removed from their libraries because this developer wanted to make sure that the agreements he'd entered into with those sites, three of the four of which entered into in good faith and by all reports kept to their agreed upon terms, didn't cause the developer to potentially lose sales on the higher priced console versions of his game. The developer lied about his reasoning. He attempted to claim that it was no big deal as people should have finished playing the game already. He actively censored justified criticism of his actions that caused direct harm to his customers and then attempted to claim ignorance over the entire matter, attempting to sweep things under the rug and mollify PC gamers as much as he could to muffle the outrage during the first critical weeks of sales on the console versions of his game. Now, I stated before that this developer deserves to be on the Dirty Devs list with a giant asterisk involved. I wanted a redemption of this. I wanted this all to be nothing more than a foolish mistake by a developer that was not being mindful of their actions and caused harm to thousands of their customers due to a foolish lack of comprehension of what it was he was doing. But there were already too many inconsistencies at that time. What with the attempted shrugging off of the incident, the silencing of criticism, and the deletion of the keys from the bundle sites that were not part of the Otaku Bundle lack of payment. It would seem that what we have now is a developer that committed an act that affected the majority of his player base out of an attempt to increase his profits on console while violating the agreements entered into with those game bundle sites, specifically GoGo Bundle and Fanatical. It would also seem that redemption is most likely not even going to happen, as the developer has placed himself into a situation where he isn't even able to make good on those attempting to get their games back, as he's unable to generate more keys, and he's claiming that Valve will not let him set the game to free. And while having a free weekend or something is a process that takes some time and does require Valve's approval, I'm reluctant to be hopeful that the developer will actually do this. The way I see it, given everything he has done so far, he is purely motivated by whatever will net him the most income, and that greed set him on a path to violate the agreements he had in order to maximize console profits, now setting him on a path to try and outdate the outrage so he can sell as much as possible. So, the asterisk from the Dirty Devs list for Ghoul Boy has been removed, but I do hope against hope that somehow the developer will make good on getting the game back into the hands of those that paid for it, but admittedly, that hope is an extremely small one, and in fact, it may be nothing more than wishful thinking. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.